Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Thank you, my friend, for joining us in the broadcast today. My Bible right now is sitting open to the book of Leviticus and chapter 8. Leviticus chapter 8, if you can, stop, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there. Also, I want you to get something on which you can jot some notes. I'm going to give an outline for Leviticus chapter 8. I think the outline will really be a help to you as you would read through Leviticus later on. Leviticus, please, chapter 8. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Uh, I want to tell you about it. I just recently used it in a really fresh, unique way. I want to tell you the story here in just a minute. But if you've been with us here and are looking at the book of Leviticus, chapters 1 through 7, you already know, looked at the rules and regulations surrounding the offering of sacrifices. And those chapters use what is referred to as legal literary stuff. But now we're going to begin to deal with chapters 8, 9, and 10. Now we're going to have a switch. We're going to use a narrative style. And most of us like narrative because we like stories. Coming to chapter 8, we enter really the second major section here in the big picture of Leviticus, where chapters 1 through 7 are all about the way to God. Notice the W word, the way to God. That's that section. Now we're going to find out in chapters 8 through 10, a section I call the workers of God. Chapters 1 to 7, the way to God. Chapters 8, 9, and 10, the workers of God. They're going to deal with the priests. Now, to worship God, you need to have the right offering. That's what chapters 1 through 7 are all about. But you also need the right priest. That's what chapters 8, 9, and 10 deal with. Obviously, Jesus Christ is our high priest. Through his mediatory, his go-between work, we can come before God. By the way, my personal title for this chapter is this. So, you want to be a preacher, do you? (laughs) So, you want to be a preacher, do you? A whole lot of people want to be preachers these days, but they don't want to deal with the preparation that it takes. Get your Bible. Get something to write on. Let's have a great time in the Word of God today. I mentioned the gospel tract here. This is our little credit card size gospel tract. It's simply entitled, Charge It, Charge It. It's designed to look like a credit card. And on the back is a very clear gospel message, just some clear statements, Bible verses about how to be saved. The other day I was talking with somebody, the subject of credit cards came up. And I said, what kind of cards do you have? And he told me, I said, what can you buy with it? He said, anything. I said, can you buy people with it? He looked at me rather strangely. He says, who would want to buy people? I said, I got a credit card that buys people. He Again, he looked at me really strangely. I, I get that look quite a bit, by the way. I said, I have a credit card that buys people. And I said, would you like to see it? He said, yeah. I took out this track, charge it. Because Christ died on the cross to pay our sin debt. He died through his blood to purchase people that he could take them to heaven. Friend, Christ will buy your unsaved friends and neighbors if they'll receive him. But first, they need to get the gospel. Get this track from us. Charge it. It's in a sample packet of gospel tracks I want to send you. If you'll let me, please, be ready. Jot down our contact information that will be given at the end of the program. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, the Charge It track. Or if you can't wait to the end of the program, just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. And by the way, right now, we're in the process of trying to raise money to print 
1.3 million gospel tracts again in the country of Pakistan. Every time we do this, thousands of people come to Christ. The problem is it costs us $22,000 to print all those there. Would you consider helping us with this project? Please, we need to go to print June 1. Help us if you would. If your Bible's open to the book of Leviticus chapter 8, verse 1 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of unleavened bread. And gather thou all the congregation together at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and the assembly was gathered together under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses said unto the congregation, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. And the next thing we have here is the whole process of the consecration ceremony. But then verses 22 and 23 says this, and he brought the other ram, the ram of the consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and he slew it. And Moses took of the blood of it and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear and upon the thumb of his right hand and upon the great toe of his right foot. Stop, please, right there. I do want to be careful right here and now as I apply this chapter to present day preachers. Remember, my title is, So You Want to Be a Preacher, Do You? Well, let me begin by first dealing with what the chapter actually says about the ordination of Aaron and his four sons. Chapter 8 is all about the consecration of the priests. And for my use, I have divided the chapter into four parts. Here they are. Part one is verses one to five. I call this the congregation. The congregation is called. Notice the C words. The congregation is called. This was a very public ceremony. There was to be no doubt in anybody's minds that God was the one putting these men into the priesthood. Part two is verses six through nine. This part I've called the clothing, the clothing. There were some very special garments to be worn by the priests, especially the high priest. And verse 6 says these five men, Aaron and his four sons, were first washed, and then their wardrobe was put on. Part number 3 is verses 10 through 30. This I call the ceremony. This is obviously the major part of the chapter. As part of the ceremony, four basic things took place in these verses, verses 10 to 30. There was an anointing, notice the A word, there was an anointing of oil. Obviously, it's a picture of the Holy Spirit anointing which believers today have. Then number two, the altar was used, my second A word. The altar was used and offerings were made. One sacrifice was done as a sin offering and a second sacrifice was done as a dedication of the men personally to God. Part number three is the application, the application of the blood. I read about that in verses 22 to 24. The blood was placed on the right ear, the right thumb, and the big toe of the right foot. This really is worth noting. The priest was to always listen to God, that's the ear. The priest was to use his hands to discharge his duties for God. And the priest was to walk carefully and circumspectly in his life for God. Wow, (laughs) there's a three-part sermon for you right there. The fourth part, the fourth word beginning with the letter A is the actions the priest were to do, verses 25 to 30. All right, I'm coming back here because I come now to my final section, my C word here, verses 31 to 36 is this, the camp out, the camp out. Yes, that's the right word. You see, for seven days, Aaron and his four sons had to stay at the tabernacle. Now, Jewish scholars think they believe that the ceremony seen in verses 10 to 30 was repeated each of those seven days as the priests were there. As the people watched and as the priest went through this ceremony, they all must have been struck with a really critical role that these five men were going to play, not just these five men, but their descendants as well. All right. 
I've walked through the highlights of the chapter as it relates to the original priest. But beloved, all born-again people are believer priests. We're told that in 1 Peter. We've all been called to offer sacrifices to God. So there are applications that we can make here for all of us. I, though, want to be careful and apply Leviticus 8 to present-day preachers, guys like me, guys like pastors and missionaries and the like. Now, let me begin by saying that the whole camp of Israel knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that these five men were called to a special work of God. Preachers today ought to be those whom others recognize that God's hand and call is upon them. Beloved, if God has called a person to do the work of the gospel as a life vocation, trust me, others are going to see the call of God on his life. For time's sake here, let me just highlight just one more thing. Those called by God had better live with the blood on their ear, the blood on their thumb, and the blood on their big toe. Oh, not literally, but figuratively. Preachers need to be those who listen to God, who do the work of God, not just talk about it, and then walk the walk of a consecrated man of God. A friend, if you think God has called you to gospel ministry as a vocational ministry, don't go tell anybody. Instead, start doing something with the gospel. Get some tracks from us and start doing some gospel work while you're going through your day-to-day routine, whatever your job presently is. If you're a high school student, start doing it there in high school. If you're a man on the job, start doing it there. Go to your pastor and say, is there a nursing home I can preach in? Is there some place, is there a Sunday school class I can teach? Let people recognize the call of God on your life because of the fruits from your labor, not because you tell them. There's an old saying from the olden days, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You've heard that phrase. People will know I'm called. People will know if you're called by the proof from your life. That being said, let me talk a moment to those who are listening today who have no proof in their life that Jesus Christ is their Savior. Oh, you talk about Jesus. You go to church. You are very faithful. You do religious stuff, and you're a moral person. Wonderful. Being a moral, church-going person can be a great thing for society, but it doesn't cut the mustard when it comes for you getting into heaven. Is there any evidence in your soul, any evidence in your life, that Jesus Christ has saved you from your sin? Friend, I will know a believer when I see them. I can't see the heart. Jesus can. Only God can be the final judge. But you know what? When I spot somebody who's living the Christ life in the strength and power of God because the new birth is a real genuine thing, I say there is a brother. There's a sister in Christ. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, do it now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.